Now a few words from the BC Federation of Labour, your co-hosts for this afternoon's Labour Day celebrations. Give it up for President Jim Sinclair! Hey. Isn't he fabulous, eh? Really, you know? Thank you so much for this. Welcome. It's Labour Day. It's fabulous to have Labour Day, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Yes, Labour Day is our day. But here's the message to everybody. Everybody, every day is Labor Day. Yeah. Every day working people get up and go to work. They think about it their families. They work hard, often in dangerous situations. And when they talk about investing in the economy, and I hear it from the right wing all the time, we have to attract capital. Let me tell you who makes investments every day in this province. Working people invest their lives and their struggle every single day to make the meals work, the mines work, the hospitals work. Everything works because of our struggle, our work, and our brains. And you know, some days it's just fine, but some things don't work. And you know, I want children to be in school tomorrow. That's where they belong. I know parents want children to be school tomorrow. That's where they belong. But the other place they belong, and I want all those parents who are here today and all of you here today to know that if you're not going to school tomorrow or taking your kids to school, you belong on the picket line standing with the teachers of British Columbia to improve conditions in their schools. It's amazing. Maybe she got tutored by Christy Clark learned how to tweet something. Be nice if she learned how to tweet the truth once in a while. But the fact is, the reason the schools are not open tomorrow is not because of teachers, it's because of a government that refuses to pay what they owe the people of this province. What does it say? For 18 months, 18 months they've been bargaining, the one big issue is class size and composition. They took that away and somebody named Clark as education minister ripped up the contract in 2002. After they ripped up the contract and made it illegal to negotiate that for teachers, classes got bigger, special needs kids suffer, teachers got laid off. They went to court. The court agreed, you're wrong, put it back in the contract. They went out and provoked the strike and ordered teachers back to work and the court said, put it back in the contract and pay the money. Sisters and brothers, when I grew up, my parents taught me if you stole something, you better give it back. Well, Christy Clark, you stole $250 million and you need to give it back at the bargaining table today. Let's end this thing. Because the real truth is, they have not given a single cent for class size and composition after 18 months. After 18 months of bargaining, they haven't brought one cent, even though the courts have told them twice, the people of British Columbia have told them, they still refuse to do it. So next week, so this week is critical. The pressure's on her for a change. It's on the government. We have to stand strong and make sure the message is there that we want those schools open, we want that money on the table, and we're not going to stop until we get it. Thank you. Okay, my time's up. I'll be real quick. But I do want to say also, I've walked the picket line at an IKEA store a lot. I gotta say, IKEA, you walk in my house, it looks like an IKEA showroom in some of those rooms. <laughs> Jesus, but you know, $4 billion in profits. $4 billion in profits last year. And they had the nerve to come to people who earned 12 and 13 and 14 dollars an hour and tell them they had to take a pay cut in order to make the company work. And when they refused, they locked them out. And then they said, you know what, we want, we want a two-tiered wage system. So we'll lower your wages, and the new employees will have lower wages. Yay! And let me say that when workers take on battles like that, they fight for every one of us. So I want to thank those people after 14 months for keeping the walk that picket line and saying we're not taking pay cuts, and every generation is worth the same. That's fundamental. I just want to end by saying, as the reporter says to me today, where will we be in 10 years, Jim? Where will the labor movement be? And I said the labor movement will be right where it is today. Standing up for justice, standing up for workers' rights, standing up for every human being, whether they have a union card in their pocket or not. 
Those folks who want to write our obituary are a little ahead of their time, I think, don't you? Yeah. That's right. I also want to thank some people. First of all, let me thank the Shandong Provincial Federation of Trade Unions from China, the six delegates here today visiting on Labor Day. They're over there. Thank you for being here today. We just finished a trip over there of trade unions to see what's going on in China. Uh, let me thank the affiliates, because it was all the unions that are here today that stuck together and organized this day and organized every day. Thank you to the organizers and the affiliates and the staff of the unions for making this happen, because nothing happens without them. And thank you to every one of you who will leave here today and continue that fight to make our province a place that all working people can stand up and be proud of. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Jim Sinclair! I just want to quickly mention those representatives from China, the Shandong uh, Provincial Federation of Labor. Those six leaders represent some 23